welcome 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 <laughs> today is our third session um, talking about rewriting your story. It's been an extremely beautiful time just getting the feedbacks and just loving the responses we're getting. My team and I have been praying. We've been very encouraged by your feedback. Um, Apparently, a lot of people have stories that they don't want to end the way it's going right now. Uh, and I'm one of those people. So it's easy for me to relate to what I'm talking about. Uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Rebecca and I have been, well, childhood friends. We rode chopper bicycles together in Okapa, Nigeria, Lagos. And I'm happy to, to, happy to have Rutimi on. Pastor Rutimi, thank you for joining us uh, all the way from Abel Kuta. Rebecca Cooper, thank you so very much for being here. Uh, my childhood friend Vivian Odifran is also on. Thank you. I'm just taking time to allow others to join us. It's been a journey so far that... I pray I won't break down and weep at some point when I'm talking to you because I intend to be as transparent as possible. Today, um, I want to talk to you if you've made mistakes before. If you haven't made a mistake in your life, don't bother to listen to this session because it's not for you. If everything you've done has been right and you don't have any reason. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate that. Um, if you don't have any regrets or any reason to look back at certain points in your life and feel, I should have done better, then this is not for you. So you can get off now. <laughs> if everything you've done is good and you've done excellently well. Uh, but if you know that there are certain points where as a teenager, you made some choices. As an adult, you goofed. Uh, you missed certain things along the way. Then this is a session for you. And I told you, I promised you I'll talk to you from my heart and nothing to hide. I'll be as authentic as possible with you. You know, the Lord gave me an instruction in 1985. Because um, I was fortunate enough to have met him at the time I did. Jesus Christ took over my heart and I could hear his instructions. But when he told me what to do, I took it to those I looked up to. And they told me, no, you don't really have to do that. And that got me into deep trouble. Let's fast forward. Thanks, Rebecca. Let's fast forward to nearly 30 years later, or 31 years later. I discovered that even though I wanted to get up from where I was, every time I remembered what I had done wrong, that disobedient move I made would always wear me down. And so I had to get to a point where I dealt with two things and those are the two things I want to share with you today and hopefully you'll be able to walk through your own story. The first thing I discovered was I carried guilt as I walked through life. Of course I smiled, of course I was the life of everywhere I went but I couldn't maximize what God has called me to do simply because I had guilt. I was holding on to the cloak of guilt. And because of that guilt, 
I was unable to be my best. Now, I want to talk to you about guilt. The day you discover you've done something wrong, maybe to your spouse, to your child, even to yourself, um, ask for forgiveness. And the moment you ask for forgiveness, you have that forgiveness imparted to you. The next thing you must do is address the spirit of guilt. Address that which comes often to accuse you. Let me give you an example. I have a friend who was pregnant while in college. And she went ahead and had this child. And from time to time, the enemy would remind her that because she had a child outside of wedlock at a young age, that's why her life is not prospering, which is a lie. Guilt destroys the movement and the trajectory of your life. So I want to encourage you this afternoon, if you feel any sense of guilt, it's not from your creator. It's probably from those who are judging you. It's from those who are telling you you've done a bad thing. Yes, maybe you did a bad thing, but who is the one to judge you? Who is the one to condemn you? Who is the one to measure whether you've done right or wrong? There are only two people. And those two people are yourself and the one who formed you, the God who created you. Guilt is something that most of us carry, particularly when you're one who fears God. And you don't know how to break free from it. The best way I can tell you is address what happened to you. Like I said earlier, the last video when we had a discussion, I said to you, don't let anything be swept under the carpet. In fact, I have a few people who've gone through the process between Tuesday and now who are just getting a release supernaturally because they took the exercise seriously. The moment you walk through that and God forgives you and you forgive yourself, you break free from the spirit of guilt. Guilt is a very strong force that keeps you stagnant. It keeps you at the barest minimum of what God has for you. Things have happened, bring it under the blood of eternal covenant and move on. You must break free from guilt. The second thing I want you to take care of is the spirit that tells you over and over again you're not good enough. Because of one single thing you've done, you keep feeling regret. Guilt and regret go hand in hand. And from regret comes a condemn condemnation. It, it stops you from being exactly who God made you to be. The regret is a very powerful tool that consistently tells you and reminds you you're no good. It tells you everybody around you doesn't like you. It tells you you failed, you can't get up again. To rewrite your story, you must kill guilt. You must destroy regret. And how do you do that? You embrace the love of God. You're more than this. Now, I'm going to try and explain something to you. I pray the Lord will make you understand it more than I can say. There are two. I want you to look at things from the aerial point of view. I want you to place yourself. Imagine yourself as sitting in a high place and looking down at mankind and what is happening on the earth. There are two forces that control this world. One is a force of darkness. The other is a force of light. The darkness is ruled by the powers that want to make you feel subservient, make you feel you're not good enough. Darkness is not the absence of light. Darkness is an entity. It's a personality. It likes to take human beings, spaces, uh, 
nations and control them. So darkness is there trying to destroy. But then there's the light. That is the kingdom of where the, the beauty of the Lord is available to you and I. The light of God is available to, to you and I. Now, these two forces are fighting for you at any given point in time. And I use the word fight because there's a tug for your soul. There's a tug for your attention. Now, whenever there's this tug from the dark kingdom, you find easy and quiet. A child is raped at an early age. There is incest in the family. They will do anything to destroy the child as young as possible. Parents are telling you you're not worth it. Your, your siblings are doing better than you. And you keep on having darkness speak to you over and over again. Don't listen to darkness because all it's trying to do is captivate your heart. Now, there's the other one that's saying to you, you're valuable, you're worthy, you're beautiful. The light of God has been, trans it's been, it's been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And as you, as you accept the love of God, light wins. Darkness loses you. Now, let me bring it down to scripture. Satan hates you. He hates everything you represent. Light is the Lord Jesus Christ. He became the light of the world to set you and I free. Jesus loves you so much, he died. He didn't have to. He died on the cross just to bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the question is, at every point in time, there's a tug of war for your soul on both sides. But thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. When you understand that guilt comes from darkness, regret comes from darkness, in insecurities come from darkness, and on this other end is the light of Christ. The light that tells you, I don't care how far you've gone. Remember the story of the prodigal child. I call him the lost son. He had gone low, low, low. That's where you and I are. Low, low, low. But then the day he came to his senses, I will return to my father. And he went back to his dad. His dad took him on. Your dad is waiting for you. Your heavenly father with his arms open, he's waiting. That's why he sent his son to die for you. So don't allow guilt to hold you back. I want to talk to women at this point. You have a failed marriage. You have a child that's gone crazy on you. Where I come from, when the child is good, it's a father's son or a father's daughter. When the child is going crazy, it's your mother's child. Maybe the child is in prison and you've done everything you know to do. Don't let that guilt hold you back. Whatever it was you did, some I've gotten feedbacks. You did right by a man, but he's chosen to leave. That's not your fault. Guilt and regret is from the kingdom of darkness. They're talking at you. Light of the love of God is tugging at you. For you to rewrite your story, for you to run again, I'm saying to you today, break free from guilt. Break free from regrets. I have a lot of regrets, but I have learned to bring regret under my feet. I have learned to take the things I did wrong in my stride because Jesus Christ died rose on the third day. I love Revelation 1.18. It says, fear not, I am he who lives even though I was dead. Behold, I'm alive forevermore and I have the keys of hell and death in my hands. If he rose on the third day, I have no reason to be down. That son came to his senses and said, I will return to my father. You can rewrite your story. Break free from guilt. Break free from that sense of regret. Remember the one who loved you so much his beard was plucked just to have you back. What kind of love again do you want? I want you to embrace the love of God. That's the only way you can heal. That's the only way you can gather momentum. That's the only way you can stand again. And look your enemies in the face and tell them, like Jesus told that woman when they brought her, she had committed adultery. Jesus said, which one of you has not sinned before? Throw the first stone. 
throw the first stone if you can. Who hasn't made a mistake? Who hasn't done something wrong? Don't let the devil hold you down with guilt. You can only rewrite your story as you understand the love of God for you. Embrace it. Walk with it. Run with it. When people have something to say, let them know, I know the one who made me. I know the one who loves me. I know the one who gave himself for me. There is still a better day ahead. My brothers and my sisters, there's nobody, as long as you're walking in this flesh, that will not fail, that will not fall. You get up again. Don't listen to anybody. Remember what I told you? Your life is in your hands. When you get to old age, 80s and 90s, you can look back and say, even though the beginning was bitter or the beginning was full of all kinds of drama, I took charge and I began to write the story of my life towards the end. And the last 20 years, the last 25 years, the last 30 years, it's in your hands. You can rewrite the story. In fact, you have no choice but to rewrite the story. I'm not giving you an option. So let's look at a gentleman called Saul in scripture. He was a murderer. He approved the death of a man. They laid his cloth at his feet. He had the, the legal papers to kill Christians. But when you look at the latter end of his life, he talks about being the chief sinner. But he also says, I am what I am by the grace of God. He, he, he ends his life by saying, out of all the apostles, I have done much more than the rest. That should engage your heart. God is still interested in using you. He's still interested in making you all that he called you to be. He's still in interested in transforming you from that timid place. Guilt and regret makes you timid. It makes you feel less than who God made you. But when you stand in the confidence of who you are in Christ, not in your strength, you can face anyone and any situation. I want you to kick down some doors. You know, this was our goal. Between now and the end of the year, I want to see you do something specific for you. You've done things for everybody. As a dad, you've taken care of the children, you've taken care of the wives or your wife. You should. But I want you to determine in your heart, you're going to do something for me for yourself, that you can point to by January 2nd, 2017. You can point to something specific that you did for yourself that's propelling you into a new year that is meaningful. You're not going to just waste any more days. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord strengthen you from within. I pray strength into your spine. I mean your skeletal frame. Receive fresh fire. Receive fresh unction from above. Such that you're able, I'm outside, I'm at a retreat. I actually pulled out of the retreat to talk, to, 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 to share with you what the Lord is laying on my heart. Don't let guilt stand in the way. Don't let any regret stand in the way. How did I pick myself up? I looked at myself in the mirror over and over again. And I said, Motolani, there is so much on your inside the world needs to hear. Yes, you made that mistake. But God is not holding it against you. Don't hold it against yourself. Forgive yourself. That's the greatest thing you can do. Forgive yourself. And then pick yourself up. Let your spine have strength. Look to the future and ask God to help you. And he will. I know that this is not in vain. I know that I'm not sharing this just for the sake of me. It's the word in my heart. It's the story of my life. It's where I have been. And God has picked me up because I'm ready to follow the light and not what the darkness is saying to me. You are precious. 
if you don't if you don't hear anything I said today, this is the most crucial thing. You are precious. You are valuable. You are needed. I need you. You'll wonder, how can I need you? I don't even know where you live. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, I'm not fine. Because at some point, what you do affects people and it reverberates into my direction. Same thing. Guilt is broken over you. Regret is broken over you. Embrace the love of God. Embrace the love of the one who so loved you, he gave himself for you. Stand in that assurance. And let's see what he will do with you. Rewrite your story. If you missed the last chat we had, go back and look at it. I, I encouraged you there to go over the burn. To scrub your pain. Don't waste your pain. And then break free from all this guilt and this comments people have and press forward. I'll see you on Tuesday and I think we'll answer questions then. If you have questions, please just, uh, you, can, you can just put it in your comment boxes. We're taking it together and then we'll kind of compile them on how to move forward. I appreciate your time. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care of yourself this weekend. Do something fun. I know you like to go to church and you like, but do something fun. Go dancing, go bowling, go swimming. Just do something for yourself. Take yourself to the spa. <laughs> Enjoy life. Yeah. That's what Christ died for. Until Tuesday, God bless you.